I'd like to thank you, thank you for being on, and I have Zion Newby uh, this evening. And uh, Zion, would you kind of introduce yourself and tell everybody a little bit about yourself? So, hi, my name is Zion Newby. I go to South County High School. I'm in 11th grade, and I'm president of my local Catholic chapter. I also serve on the National Catholic Board, and as you can tell, I'm a very big fan of politics, as I should say. Well, good. We're glad to have you again. This is I know this is your second year on the National Capital League Board. You want to uh, tell a little bit about what your experience has been just being in Capital League? You know, it's been amazing. It's really interesting. It's good to have you know, a strong, a strong group of males that you can depend on, if I, if I know how to say, if I can say it like that, right? It's good to have a good group of people that you can rely on and you can trust, because it's like having friends, but it's like having people that are more mature than you, that you can ask questions to, that you can rely on. So that's what, that's what's really big to me in capital. We have a lot of uh, leaders I look up to. Yeah. Um, tell us about uh, what your leadership style is and what you try to do as a leader. So one thing I think as a leader that's really important is communication in any way. So how I communicate with people is like with jokes, trying to get to know people, asking them random questions, asking them everything about them. Because I feel like when leaders make deeper connections, it makes a team work better. I'm not like the kind of person who is um, restrictive as a leader. I wouldn't say that. I'm really big on letting people do what they want as long as we keep the faith and stay to our final goal. Mm -hmm. So what are you looking to do forward into the future? Um, I want to go into politics. I really want to be the governor of Ohio or a center, one of the two. So why Ohio? Because don't you live in Virginia? Well, I live in Virginia, but I'm from Ohio. I was oh. born in Ohio. And plus, if I run for president, nine out of ten times, if you win Ohio, you become president. So I kind of need, would need Ohio to be my column, so. I think it'd be a good place to start. Mm -hmm. So where are you looking at going to college? Where are you thinking about going to college and what are you looking at studying? Well, so I'm looking at political science. Overall, I want to be a constitutional lawyer, but I'm looking at political science in my top three colleges, I should say. I'm looking at Harvard, Duke, and Ohio State. I also like UVA, yeah. but... Yeah. I see Harvard the heart. Cool. Yeah. yeah, I mean, this is my choice, but I mean, this is my top college, obviously. But so, I always have my options open. The day, anyway. So, uh, why don't you uh, tell us what else do you like to do besides? I know you're in Kappa League, I know you're interested in politics. What else do you like to do? I mean, <laughs> that's about it. I mean, but I mean, I, you know, I work out sometimes, I like to work out a little bit. I also like aquascaping, which is where you get aquariums and you, you know, play with them. But the main thing is mostly politics. That's, that's mostly it. That's the main thing that I do. I work out too to clear my mind as well. But Tell me, I've about. never heard of that. Tell me about what you said, aquascaping. What is Aquas it? I'm so it's where you get a fish tank with fish and you get the plants and you scape it to look like whatever you want it to. So I have mindscapes look like a, like a natural ecosystem. It's very common, actually. But the only frustrating thing I would say is, is when you're staying up to 3 a.m. studying for an AP test and you're seeing the fish sitting there and just calm, just chilling, like, it's ridiculous. So what got you interested in politics? So when I was in second grade, this is why I'm very big on education. When I was in second grade, my teacher had this set of books about political figures. And the first book, I'll never forget it. It was called The Picture Life of John F. Kennedy. And I was reading it and I thought it was so interesting. And when it got to the end, there was a picture of him in Dallas. And it said that the story ended. I wondered why the story ended. I didn't know he had died. So I kept reading, I kept researching. So the first president I ever liked was John Kennedy because I was researching the him and then that just opened it up and now I just love politics. 
Well, well good. Do yeah. as you know, I, I have an interest in politics as well, and I was uh, one of my majors and one of my degrees is in political science. So, yeah. uh, you know, so I do understand and appreciate that. So, uh, to tell tell us about what some of your lessons and what what you've learned uh, as far as being a leader. So the first thing I would say about being a leader, and Joe Biden said this before, is never judge somebody by, you know, never make, choose, never pick somebody else's judgment. Never, you know, say, make any calls or say something before you know the true facts of everything. Because like one thing I noticed about leadership is, is like, we're really rushed when we want to do things, so we have to think things out. And um, I think as a leader, you have to be able to stay calm and not rush to conclusions. So that's the first big thing. The second big thing about being a leader is about bridging connection. That's the second big thing. It's a lot easier to get somebody to do something for you when they like you versus when they don't know who you are at all. If you form that personal connection, it makes it a lot easier and it makes you more of a team. You can't really have a team if nobody knows who, people on team or who they are, so. Okay, very good. So um, what, what makes Scion, what makes you special and different from everybody else? I would personally say is that I am a really good public speaker and I have a love for politics and I have a natural connection to people. I'm a huge extrovert. So I think that's what makes me different. It's, I'm really, it's very easy for me. You can ask my principal and ask my teachers. It's very easy for me to get off task in school talking to people. It's very easy for me to bridge connections with people, but it's also very easy for me to articulate a point. Like if I have an idea for something in the span of five minutes, I can come up with the idea and come up with an entire argument for it. So I think that's what, what separated me from a lot of people. Okay. All right, good. Well, you know, I, I lost a bet to you on the election. You know, uh, we both thought uh, President-elect Biden was going to win. We just had a difference, and I thought he'd win by more than he did. So why don't you give us your, your take on the political environment uh, that we are dealing with in our country today? You know, I'm a big believer that history repeats itself, and I think that, number one, if you're a Catholic leaguer, you should definitely have some basic knowledge of the political system. Everybody should know. I know I, everybody shouldn't be me. But everybody should know the governor, the president, and the representative. That's the most basic thing. Right to representatives talk to them. That's the first thing. Second thing is our country is divided right now, but our country gets divided every 10 years. I think that when our country is divided, this is the most important time to research, to be involved, and to be a part of the conversation. Because I think that people need to be knowledgeable and we need to know what's going on in our country. So, yes, is our country divided right now? Yes, but we also need to be unified in the sense that we all understand what's going on in our political system. So uh, what what things would you think uh, we could do to help more, to help unify our country better? One thing I'm very big on, if you could not tell, I'm a huge Joe Biden friend, I'm a huge Democrat. I sit at the table with my Republican friends all the time and have respectful conversations with them. I think one of the issues with our country right now is we put people in boxes and we say, you're this, you're that. But I think that when we have conversations with each other, this ties back into the leadership. When you have a conversation with a Republican who's your friend or somebody who you like, it's harder for you to hate them. It's harder for you to make stuff up about them. Same thing, vice versa. It goes both ways. I know it's harder for them to say you know, bad things about Democrats. I really think it's just a um, disagreement in opinion. So I think that the most basic way you can start to unify and heal a country is by talking to Republicans, talking to conservatives and hearing their opinion. And Democrats. Oh, yes. first. What I call it is sharpening the knife, I think, because I'm a, I'm a debater in my head myself. So I watch a lot of conservatives and a lot of the stuff was like what you said. I'll say from the table, they'll say it's a, it's a, it's a fork or something. I will binge watch what conservatives say. I binge watch what people who disagree with me say. And then when I debate people who sit at the table or say it's an X or say it's a fork, I can show them why at the table, right? And even if they don't believe me, that's fine. But I'm sharpening my own mind. One rule that I have that I'm very big on is that the merits of your debate should be good enough to where you don't have to walk away. If somebody tells me that Donald Trump is not a racist and list out all of his policies, 
I know all the sausage inside and out. So I should be able to hit them back with something. I shouldn't get mad at them and scream at them. I should be able to have a civilized debate. Now, when the debate gets to a point where nobody can have a good conversation and nothing's happening and you're just arguing, walk away. You can't do anything else. It's fine to walk away sometimes and it's okay to be responsible. The thing is, is if you're really having a debate and somebody's beating you in that debate and you're just mad so you call them X or Y or Z, that's your fault. That's not the other person's fault. So there's two key differences. Good. No, that's a, that's a very good point. Very, uh, very good way of looking at things. You know. uh, somebody says Black Lives Matter is a terrorist organization, right? I say, I mean, how? And they'll say, well, they've looted and rioted. And this always something every time. Name one 100% peaceful movement in the history of the United States. They can't do it. Oh, Mr. Burnett's out. Oh, he's back in. Name one peaceful movement in the United States that's been effective that has worked. No movement has ever been that effective, number one. Number two, you can support the movement without supporting the violence. You support America, but you don't support carpet bombing Middle Eastern countries. You support America, but you don't support the racism. You support America, and you like the founding fathers who were slave owners. You turn a blind eye to that, but you can't, you know, analyze Black Lives Matter and say that it's not all about violence. Again, I think uh, you know you have uh, you have a, a very good attitude, and I think you have a very good technique for you know uh, wanting to look at things with people and and how to debate people. And I've, I've enjoyed your debates you had with uh, Brother Ben Jackson. Uh, that, been that's some good debate. <laughs> so uh, as we get ready, we're going to get ready to kind of wrap this up, but. Uh, Kind of, kind of give us your perspective on on the recent election and uh, and why the outcome turned out the way it did. So I think that this election was interesting. Number one, because young people really came out. Young people came out in this election and it really surprised me. I thought it was going to be a lot closer. I thought it was going to be about 271 to 269, but it was 306 to 232, which is very ironic because that's what Trump got last time. That's the first thing. Second thing is my map did have Joe Biden. I think we had this conversation already. My map had Joe Biden as the winner. The only thing I got wrong was Georgia, only because of the voter suppression. Um, so, that, <laughs> so stuff like that, you know, it's hard to predict. I think one thing that a lot of pl political people will agree with me is, is that the scary thing about Trump and politics is that you can't predict anything, really. It's very, you can't go off polls, you can't go off what people say, you just have to wait till the day it happens. So I think a lot of Democrats took a sigh of relief, but I think that Joe Biden still has a lot of work to go. You know, we're still in the middle of a pandemic. Our country is in a recession. Just because the stock market goes up 3,000 points, we still have 20 million people unemployed. So we're not anywhere close to done. So, I mean, I was clearly happy with the results of the election, but I think Joe Biden has a lot to do and only four years to do it, so. Well, good. Well, hey, I want to, uh, again, thank you for your time and uh, I've, I've truly enjoyed this and I've enjoyed our interactions we've had on the National Capital League Board and I appreciate your leadership. And, uh, you know, again, I just want to thank you and uh, I guess I'll see you on a call here in about 10 more minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right.